Hi, uh, this is the bonus that I had promised you. These are some excellent interviews that Bryson was able to get for us when he went to a rally that was in support of innocent Palestinian people. Um, if you have anything that you would like to comment on them, as always, it's anonymous, it's unattended, the phone number 833-589-7637. It's LuxPods, 833-LUXPods. Uh, text, call, either way, unattended. I'm not going to pick it up, pick up the phone or anything like that. So I'd love to hear from you. This first one is from someone who wanted to remain anonymous, but they did give their initials GE. Yes, my, uh, my initials are GE. Um, I've been in Kansas City for, for a long time. I lived in Kansas City in 1990. I was born overseas, but I came here to the States in 1990. And my family lives here, my kids live here. My dad is Palestinian, is from what used to be Northern Palestine. He's from uh, Haifa. But he moved to Lebanon in uh, 1948 when the State of Israel was um, uh, established. And, you know, it's been 75 years and we continue to see the, the bloodshed. And it's just really, really very appalling and very sad to continue to see how um, Palestinians are always stuck in the cross. cross um, it's just basically the, the shooting and the killing. And every f couple of years, I believe four or five years, uh, Palestinians pay a dear price for what's going on with the conflict. Um, it's taken out of contest, it's taken out of um, really to understand what the real what the issue is. You've got basically a colonial settler movement from the state of Israel that got established. And we can go back to history and continue to blame the Israelis and we can kind of continue to see if we're going to push the Palestinians out of the land. Everybody believes it's a religious conflict. It is not. It's rooted, it's rooted in religion, but what it is, it's really about a settler movement that takes over the land. Um, right now, what we see is, is the bombing of Gaza, and just that really what it is, is the goal right now is to just inflict as much harm on the Palestinians as possible. They say we're going to end Hamas. Well, how are you going to end Hamas? The issue is not Hamas. The issue is the occupation. The issue is you've got people with no hope and you pin him inside a prison. It's a size, it's 150 miles, square mile. Um, to give it a perspective, it's twice the size of Overland Park. 150 miles, about 45 miles along, about seven and a half miles to three and a half miles wide. And you got people that live in that land, about 60% uh, unemployment. And they basically you can't leave the land. You can't, it's, it's, you got, um, it's all concealed. It's an open prison. You can't bring resources in, you can't leave. And it's very difficult for the Palestinians to have a life there. And that's what happened, is when, when this situation, um, it, it, it slipped, we failed them. We failed them, um, in my opinion, we failed the Palestinians. There is a peace process been going on for 30 years. You don't hear from the Palestinian president, you're not hearing from the Palestinian authority. It's because um, they've been marginalized, it's because you can't talk about peace process for 30 years and nothing comes out of it. There has to be an opportunity for peace and to see that there is a solid movement on ground. Stop the bombing, allow water in, people are thirsty, stop the, um, allow the, the fuel in, allow electricity. People cannot live without water and electricity and fuel. This is the eighth day, stop that. And then moving forward, let's find a solution, a true solution. It will take courage from our elected officials, from the State Department, from our congressmen and women, from our president to stand up and actually force everybody to have peace. Force the Israelis to sit down and have a peace. This whole movement from Netanyahu and how right this government has been and allowing the settlers to have just uh, full control of the land and not rein them in all that violence. This is what got us to this point. Let's have peace and through justice and through peace and allow the Palestinians to live side by side with the Israelis. Allow the Israelis to live, allow the Palestinians to live. Only then we will have a true lasting peace. And I just hope that this would be the last war that will go through in, uh, in Gaza. Thank you. This one is from somebody named Ian Monroe. So I'm Ian, excuse me, Ian Monroe. 
um, and I'm a member of Citizens for Justice in the Middle East, which is an organization that's been in Kansas City since 2003, and uh, its main role is to uh, lobby uh, legislators at the local and national level for a just policy toward Palestine. And over those years, things have changed and gotten steadily worse for Palestinians. And this demonstration that's going on now is just as far as, you know, as it's gone, one of the worst things that's happened for Palestine, both for Palestinians and Israelis. It's been terrible for both of them. And I think what you'll find if you talk to almost anybody here today uh, is the most troubling thing is the lack of context for what's happened, the lack of understanding that what's happening in Israel right now and happening in, in Gaza is the product of a historical process that you have to have some understanding of to know why it happened. And, but when you try to explain it, people think you're trying to justify it. There's a difference, though, between explaining and justifying. There's no justification for what Hamas did, but there is an explanation. And I'll let this go by. Yeah, well, let's see, the context really is historical. And it, just as you can't really understand what's going on for Israelis in their minds and their feelings right now without understanding the Holocaust. You also can't understand what's happening to Palestinians without knowing what happened to them in 1947 and, and 1967, 1948 really, and 1967, when they were driven from their land. And, and uh, most of them were, and many of them now reside in Gaza. And they're in a basically a, what has been called an open-air prison. Over two million Palestinians are confined and have really no life opportunities, no hope uh, of any change in their lives except were things getting steadily worse. So you, you really, one really has to understand that historical context to understand why Hamas did what it did. And again, there's no justification for that. It's a terrible abuse of human rights, and it does, does Hamas no good. But the abuse of human rights for Palestinians has gone, all, gone on all my lifetime. Uh, it really spans my lifetime. And uh, my interest in, in, their, in, in that, this issue goes back to uh, a Palestinian that I knew when I was in graduate school back in 1966, he was Palestinian. He just explained to me what had happened to his people and to Palestinians and to his family. And I thought, well, that's not right. That's, that's really wrong. This was at the time of, of subtle diplomacy and all the notion that somehow Israel would act justly, but it never has acted justly. It's just continued. Please, yeah. And you can take this as well. Um, has just continued to take Palestinian land, continued to imprison Palestinians, and continued to make things harder and harder for Palestinians to live a decent life. So that's where we are now. All right, there you have it. Uh, thanks to Bryson for getting these interviews and letting us share them here. Um, check out the other shows on the Lux Media Network. We do have the international one coming up, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for listening.